Hello everyone. Welcome to the presentation. My name is Greg Shirk. I'm the supervisor for the Special Programs Unit with the Bureau of Workforce Partnership and Operations here within Labor and Industry. I want to thank you today for taking the time to watch my presentation. I really think that the information I'm going to provide to you today will not only benefit you, but it will also benefit the employees that you're going to bring on board. Today's agenda for my presentation, uh, I will talk about the Work Opportunity Tax Credit first, um, what it is, what it does, how it can help you and your employees. And then once we're finished with that, I will go into the federal bonding program. Okay, what is the Work Opportunity Tax Credit? Um, around here we call it WATSI. And if you don't mind, for the remainder of the presentation, I'll refer to it as WATSI. So WATSI, it's a federal program, not state. Um, and it's made available to employers. Uh, and it's basically an incentive for you to hire individuals who have faced you know, certain barriers to employment. And it gives you an incentive to hire these folks. And I'll explain that incentive here coming up in the next few slides. Some of the highlights for Watsi, employers, it saves you money, saves your company money. And I'll tell you how. Depending on how much the tax credit is that that individual qualifies for, let's just say $2,400. That $2,400 reduces your federal tax liability when you go to file your income tax at the end of the year. So just imagine you hire three, four, whatever many people, and each one of them qualify, or just say a few of them qualify, you know, one or two, it's going to save your company a lot of money. So you can see how it adds up pretty quickly. You can actually, as an employer, submit an application for every new hire you bring on board. There's not a limit, okay? Every person you bring on board, submit an application. Again, any size employer can benefit from this federal program. You know, most of the time, you know, we receive thousands of applications from these big box stores, Walmart, Target, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, and so forth. But we also receive applications from very small, small mom and pop shops. And I'll give you an example. We have Hornung's Family Hardware Store down here on 2nd Street in Harrisburg. Mrs. Hornung got started the program well, about six, seven years ago. She gave me a call and I introduced her to her and got her hooked up. They are a very small mom and pop shop organization. And I'll tell you how, they hire maybe one to two people, keep maybe one to two people on board at a time throughout the year. And uh, she has been very excited about the program. It saved them a ton of money. And I know she's out there talking about this program to all her uh, friendly employers on the street and everyone else. Also, any of you who are qualified tax-exempt 501c organizations, you are eligible to claim this credit. The only one caveat is you must hire a veteran who qualifies one of the five different veteran target groups. And I'll get into more detail of those here in a few slides. Okay, some of the non-veteran target groups. We have TANF, which is you know, cash assistance, long and short term. SNAP, formerly known as food stamps. Summer youth. Designated community residents, those are folks living in Warren and Venango County and also HUD EZ zones, which is around the New Jersey, Camden, and Philadelphia areas. We have vocational rehabilitation referrals, ex-felons, also people who are receiving supplemental security income, and a brand new one from about a year or so ago was long-term unemployment recipient. Okay, so those are the non-veteran target groups. Let's go on to the veteran target groups. Hey, as you can see, we have a veteran or family member who receives SNAP, again, food stamps. We have two disabled veteran categories, one with a veteran hired within one year of discharge from active duty, and the other disabled veteran who's been unemployed for six months or more. And then we have two different unemployed veteran target groups. One is a veteran who's been unemployed for at least four weeks up to six months, and then an unemployed veteran for six months or more. There you have your five veteran target groups. Again, those are the ones that the 501Cs must hire in order to qualify. Now, you for-profit individuals or uh, employers, you can do the non-veteran and veteran target groups, both. Okay, for all intents and purposes, the definition of a veteran is any person who has served on active duty in the United States Armed Forces for at least 181 days. Now, that one and a half, 181 days does not include training time. And what I mean by that is their basic training which ranges anywhere from eight weeks all the way up to 13 weeks. And then there's school time where they learn their job, what they signed up for. That time does not count towards 181 days. Now there's also another uh, area where they might qualify, and that's why I have an or there. Or is collecting compensation for a service-connected disability. 
Now, why do I have OR? Because if they're collecting that compensation for service-connected disability, the 181 days is out the window. They could have served one week on basic training, hurt themselves, collecting service-connected, they're good to go. A couple months, whatever. As long as they're collecting that service, that compensation for service-connected, and there's the key, service-connected disability, they qualify. Also, something you may not think about, dishonorably discharged veterans are eligible to receive the tax credit for you. Okay, some of the areas where someone might not be eligible, any relatives and or dependents of the employer would not qualify. Former employees, doesn't matter how long ago they worked for you, anybody who is a rehire would not qualify for the tax credit. And lastly, majority owners of the business. Okay, here we have some of the non-veteran credit amounts. Usually they range from 1,500 all the way up to 2,400, and we have long-term TANF, you know, cash recipients. That's a $9,000 maximum credit taken over a two-year period. Now, if you notice, in the minimum and maximum columns, I have 120 hours and 400 hours. What that means is, in order for the employee to qualify for the minimum credit, they must work at least 120 hours. And in order for you to claim the maximum credit, they would have to work at least 400 hours. Here are the final remaining non-veteran credit amounts. Again, 1,500 and 2,400. Okay, let's get on to the veteran credit amounts. Okay, you can see we have the veteran SNAP with 15 to 24, the unemployed veteran four weeks to six months, again, 15 to 24. And then we jump up a little bit. We got the veteran unemployed more than six months, 35 to 5,600. And then you see how much the disabled veterans are. The one year within discharge is three to 4,800. And then here's the big one, a disabled veteran unemployed for six months, $6,9600. So as you can see, if you're out there hiring veterans, this can really add up quick for you employers. Tax exempt organizations. Okay, here are the amounts for there. They range from $975 all the way up to $6,240. Now, if you remember, the for-profit employers, I said how it saved you money, it would reduce your federal tax liability at the end of the year. For you folks who are tax-exempt 501c organizations, what this does, it reduces your Social Security tax you pay in on each individual employee. A little bit different there for the non, uh, non-profit organizations. But still, again, it's gonna save you money. Okay, applying for the credit. There are two forms that must be filled out and signed. Uh, those are an IRS Form 8850 and an ETA Form 9061. Now, what's most important is these forms must be submitted within 28 days of the person's start date. So let me give you an example. If you have an employee beginning work today, you have 28 calendar days, not business days, calendar days, to submit that application. Now, we prefer electronically, you see that in my note there on the slide, uh, they should be submitted electronically. If you can, you can uh, mail them in, you know, by regular U.S. Postal Service. Uh, the postmark date on that envelope must be within that 28-day period. But the best way and the way we really recommend is for you to submit the form electronically on our website, which is www.cwds.pa.gov. If you don't mind, what I'd like to do here is leave the slide presentation for a moment and take you to the website just so I can show you how easy it is to submit this application, what it actually looks like, and what you will be doing. So if you bear with me for just one moment, I'm going to transition from the slide presentation onto the website. So bear with me for just one moment, please. Okay, as you can see, I am signed in to my company profile, which I named Tax Credit Services, which is my unit's name. And you'll see I'm signing in here up here, Greg Shirk. You'll see the blue menu bar. You have home, report new hires, my profile, events, resources, my account. Well, you don't want to go to report new hires, even though there is a new hire you're going to be reporting, but that's not the right path. You want to hover your mouse over my profile. You'll see the drop-down menu. And once you scroll down to Tax Credit Application List, click on that. And the website's a little slow this morning. There we go. 
Now you should see on your screen the tax credit application list screen. Let me scroll down here a bit. Here's some applications I submitted this morning just as an example. You'll see six there. And it looks like three are certified, two denied, and one incomplete. Okay, once you submit an application, um, our system can make automatic determinations on most of the target groups. Those target groups being SNAP, formerly known as food stamps, TANF, SSI recipient, vocational rehabilitation referral, and lastly, long-term unemployed recipient. Those applications you would not need to submit any supporting documents. Now, if, like for food stamps, for example, there is a requirement for an age between the ages of 18 and 39. If you happen to type in the age incorrectly, and that way it would not match up with the Department of Human Services, our system would generate an incomplete letter requesting age verification. All you would need to do is just submit a copy of the driver's license or email us and let us know and we can uh, make adjustments for you. Now, for the target groups that our system cannot automatically determine, such as the five veteran, or let's say the designated community resident, we would need supporting documents. So in that case, you would see in the determination status column for the application incomplete, as you see in the last one down there for Larry Test. Now for the veterans, we prefer a DD-214. That is a discharge certificate that every veteran receives when they exit the R or military. Everyone should have a copy. Um, for the designated community resident, we would need something to prove their their age and address. Now, of course, a driver's license is great, um, a copy of the W-4, or any, any such document like that. If you have any questions, you can give us a call and my contact information at the end of the presentation. Now, for the certified applications, you would want to print those out and give them to your accountant. Um, the denied, you can review those um, and let us know if you have any questions about why the application was denied. At the top of this screen, you can actually search by determination status certified, denied, incomplete. Um, you can also search by start date range, determination date range, or also application created date range. Okay, let me scroll down to the bottom. Let's get started with how you create an application or spin application online here. So you wanna scroll down to the bottom of the screen and over in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the create application button. So let's go ahead and click on that. Okay. You should have the tax credit application screen or application screen in view right now. Let's scroll down here. The first box you're going to see is the employee or we call job applicant information. Everything with the right asterisks, of course, is required. So you have the social, the name, mailing address, city, state, and zip. And again, if they're under the age of 40 and they're being submitted for food stamps, type in that date of birth your company address right here in the middle. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll have the, all the dates. These dates are on page two of the 8850. You have the date applicant gave the information, the date applicant was hired, the date applicant was offered the job, and the date the applicant started the job. Now, sometimes all these dates might be the same. That's fine. If they are, that's, that's completely fine. And you can use a start date for all four of those dates. It, it, it's not really that big of a deal. Next, you want an occupation type, position. Pick one which closely relates to what the employee will be doing. And then the hourly wage, type in there. Let's scroll down a bit more. The next box will be the IR, or I'm sorry, yes, the IRS form 8850. Now you'll see here in between the employee's information, the 8850 save as draft button. We have these buttons throughout the application screen here. You can actually save the application as a draft Let's say you're working on the application and oh, the phone rings, someone walks in your office, it's a need to have to talk to you right away, go ahead and save it as a draft, that's fine. But please, if you save it as a draft, do not forget that it's in there because if you go, about, go past the 28 days and then try to fill it out and submit it, it will be denied for not being filed on a timely manner. Okay, so let's get back to the, credit, uh, the form 8850. Again, these questions mirror what's on the actual form. So whatever the employee checks, you would check the same box on here on the screen. Scroll down a little bit farther, and then you would want to check 
the signature on file box right here in the lower left hand corner of 8850. What this basically is signifying is that you have the forms filled out and completed and signed and they are kept at your location. Now, an important thing to remember, yes, you're filing this information online, but those forms still need to be filled out, signed, and they need to be kept at your location for a minimum of four years. That is for IRS audit purposes. Okay, you'll see another Save as Draft button, like I told you. And now we're moving on to the 9061 form. Again, these questions mirror what is on the 9061 form. So again, whatever the employee checked on these boxes, you will check the same questions on the online form here. Very easy, very simple to do. I keep moving down. And we keep going there, some of the veterans. Now, we're getting to the bottom of the 9061. You'll see at the bottom of the 9061 the same signature on file as the 8850 we had earlier. Now, something I want to point out, 24 right here. It says sources used to document eligibility. You can leave this blank. We don't need you to list all the documentation provided. Um, not necessary. Just ignore that box. We do not need that information. Again, like I told you, if the target group the employee is input for or may qualify for, if it's one of the target groups that we cannot automatically determine, such as veteran or designated community resident, our system will generate that incomplete letter. You can actually, once you see that incomplete status, you can actually go back into the application and upload a copy of the supporting documentation. Again, if you like to mail it in, you can print out the incomplete letter, attach that supporting documentation to the incomplete letter, and mail it into our address. Now at the bottom of the 8850, these are the signatures from the 8850, the date of signatures, employer's date, and the employee's date and then your job title. So again, we have another save as draft, and then here's the submit application button right there. Now, remember I told you you can mail the applications in, and that's perfectly fine, although we prefer you do electronically. And remember I said, if you mail it in, that postmark date must be within 28 days of the start date, okay? So when you click on that submit application button, that creates your postmark date for this electronic application. So again, remember, under 28 days, calendar days, not business. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm gonna take you back to the presentation so we can finish it up. And if you just bear with me, we'll get back to the slide presentation. Just one moment, thank you. Okay, we're back to the slide presentation. Um, now, I told you how easy it is. It, it's so easy to do that application online. Um, it just takes a few minutes, uh, but I can't stress enough Again, if you save it as a draft, please don't forget it's in there. And please remember to click that submit application button within 28 days. Now, to obtain the forms, you can actually go to the website. And in the up and right hand corner of the website, you'll see the help icon with the blue question mark or the white question mark in the blue circle. Click on that. You'll want to look, you'll look under list of miscellaneous documents and you'll see a category there for WATSI and federal bond. If you click on that, it'll expand. It'll have the two forms that I mentioned. It will also have uh, desk guides on how to submit the applications, how to print out the termination letters. It has information on the federal bonding program and more information on the work opportunity tax writer, WATSI. A lot of good information underneath that list of miscellaneous documents. Now, what I'll take you a few minutes is talk to you about some of the best practices I've uh, you know, come across here some of the employers and something we've, you know, I'm doing this for like eight, nine years, so I'd like to talk to you about some of these. Uh, what I tell employees or employers is, whoever you're going to interview, have everyone complete the paperwork, and I'll tell you why. Let's say you have two individuals who are equally qualified and you're sitting on the fence, oh, which one should I pick, like Sam or Sally, who should I? If one of those individuals answers yes to any one of those questions, you may want to consider hiring that person, bringing that person on board, because they may qualify you for the tax credit. Just a thought. Again, ensure the forms are completely filled out and signed, 
and filed within 28 days of start date. I can't stress that enough. File electronically. Best way, it's the way we really recommend, and make sure you input correct information. Check and double check before you click that submit application button. It only takes a few minutes. If you must mail, if you're down to the wire, you just can't get online or something, if you do mail, please get a certificate of mailing from the post office. It's U.S. Postal Service Form 3187. And now once they put the postmark stamp on there, make sure you write the person's name on that form of who you're actually mailing, what application you're mailing in. That way we know you actually mail that person's form on those days. Upload supporting documents to the application. I say that is because, you know, we get a lot of people who say, oh, I mailed it in, and it gets lost in the mail. So we recommend you upload any of those supporting documents directly to the application. It's right there. It's so much easier for us to go to the application, click it, and bada boom, bada bing, we'll certify or deny the application. We are actually current. Whatever, whatever supporting documents are uploaded on a daily basis, we process them the same day. So there's no wait time. File the forms on your own. Well, what I mean by that is there are a lot of companies out there we call third-party agents or consultants who offer to file the information or file the forms for you. They say we'll take all, you know, everything off your hands. You don't have to do anything. Well, they ain't charge anywhere from 25 to 35 percent of the tax credit. And I'll tell you what, um, you know, uh, there are some good consultants out there. I, I'll give them that. But a lot of the consultants um, are just so big and so overwhelmed. They forget about applications. Uh, they lose documentation um, and so forth. In fact, I was just in the system the other day. And I saw a company who had certification letters from back in 2017 that were never even printed out by the consultant. So again, if you can, if you have the manpower and the time, please file the forms on your own on our website. So much better. Number seven, any issues, concern, please contact my office. Do not guess. I don't know how many times we have employers call in and, well, I didn't have time to call in and, and they just did something wrong or whatever. We can't, this is a federal program. We have to follow federal regulations and guidelines, and we just can't, you know, budge from that. Um, I mean, it's just like you're filing your income tax at the end of the year. You can't, you know, you know, erase a little bit here, erase a little bit there, make things meet to just make ends meet. You just, we just can't do that. So any issues, concerned, please reach out to us. We're here to help you. And again, lastly, spread the word about WOTC. I think once you start partaking in this program and you see the benefits or how much of a benefit you and your company I guarantee you'll probably start spreading the word. Oh, let's move on to the federal bonding program. Uh, the federal bonding program, I'm sure probably a lot of you have not heard about this. Maybe some of you have, um, but I get a lot of employers calling in, hey, this guy, I want to hire him. He's talking about the federal bonding program. I don't know what it is. Sounds too good to be true. Well, this program has been around for almost 54 years. And believe me, it's true. And it's, it's a great program. The main objective of this program, it's an incentive for you, the employer, to hire anybody you may feel will put you at risk if you bring this person on board, okay? So it's an incentive for you to hire these at-risk job seekers. Probably asking, who do I mean is at risk? Well, of course, I'm sure ex-offenders come up first in your train of thought. Well, guess what? If you're a bank or you're a grocery store and the person will be working with money and they filed bankruptcy, they could be an at-risk employee. Guess what? I can issue a bond. Recovering substance addicts and also disarmed and discharged veterans from the military, I can issue a bond. Basically, if you think that person is going to be an at-risk employee for any reason, I can issue a bond. Also, let's say you have an existing employee and you want to promote them and you're going to give them an increased monetary responsibility. Say let's, they're going to be responsible for equipment that's much more expensive than what they're usually used to, or they're going to be, you know, in charge of the payroll or, or more part of the payroll, I can issue a bond, too, on the first day of their promotion. Highlights for this program. Absolutely zero cost to you, the employer, or the job seeker. Zero, nothing. No paperwork complete. I do everything. I take care. Everything's done automatically. Nothing for you to do other than to call me. There is no waiting period. Once you call me and I say, okay, we're good to go, the bond's issued, it's effective immediately. Takes effect that instant. No deductible, like your car or homeowner's insurance. If you would have to file a claim, zero deductible. And lastly, the bond is good for six months. 
and it protects you against any theft of property or money up to $5,000. Some of the restrictions for the federal bonding program. The individual must be, of course, legal working age in Pennsylvania. The employee must pay federal taxes through the payroll deduction. The job must last for at least six months, and that's just because the bond is good for six months. I can't issue a six-month bond if the job's only be one, two, three, or four months. Um, just doesn't, you know, not very good practice. And also self-employed individuals are ineligible. Okay, the issue process for the bond. You would contact me on the employee's first day of work or their first day of promotion. What I do is I sign into an online program. I fill out the request form. All I need is your information, your company's information name, your name, your address, telephone number, the employee's name, social security number, and some general information about the job, you know, the, the you know, job duties or whatever, and, and that's it. Um, and I click submit. Again, the bond is, is effective immediately. What happens is within 10 working days, you'll receive the bond in the mail, the actual certificate. Along with that package are instructions if you would have to file a claim. Let's say the employee did steal money or property. It will give you instructions on how to file a claim against that employee. It will also give you instructions if you want to extend the bond further past the initial six months. Now, remember, the initial six months is on the Commonwealth, completely free. And if you want to extend it for an additional six months, there's an additional charge. Now, that charge, it depends on a case-by-case -case basis. I reached out to the union insurance group. They're the ones who issued the initial bond. And they told me that it would depend on job responsibilities, and also any past offense that individual had. So if they're an ex-offender, whatever offenses they had in the past, and also the job responsibilities. If they're not an ex-offender, then they would look at the job responsibilities, and that, that would determine how much the additional six months is for. Now, I can tell you, I've been up here for almost nine years as a state bonding coordinator. I've never had an employer file a claim, and I've never had an employer extend for additional six months. Usually after that first initial six months, they know whether or not that employee is trustworthy or not. And I can tell you, these folks who um, come to me, I'd say 99% of my bonds are issued to ex-offenders. They're just so grateful to get a job, you know, after being turned down for so many times. And this program is helping them out, and you're helping them out by hiring them. You know, they're not going to take any. You know, they're just so grateful for the job. They just, they really work out really well. Again, I've never had a claim filed. So this is just a great program. It's a win-win for both you guys and the employees. Okay, you'll see my contact information there on the screen. Um, you'll have my direct line. I work from 7 to 3, Monday through Friday. If you happen to call close to 3 o'clock or after 3 o'clock, I will return your call the very next business day. I return calls within 24 hours. You have my personal email address there, gshirk at pa.gov. And then you also have the resource account. That's for tax credit services. Um, we have all my staff have access to that resource account, and they monitor that resource account throughout the day. So it happens to be, I'm away from my desk, we're on meetings all day. You have a question, email that resource account, and you'll get an answer back that very same day. Like I said, we monitor that, that account all throughout the day. Okay, this concludes my presentation. I hope uh, you gain some uh, information that will be very beneficial to you. Again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm here to help you. I'm here to answer your questions. Um, you know, I want to make this work for you. So again, thank you again for taking your time to watch this presentation, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.